Hey everyone, my name is Daniel, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how you can queue up work in Power Automate for desktop. Now, this process is very important, especially if you wanna decouple these complex processes that you may have, such that now each of these queues can run asynchronously. That is, they don't have to run at the same time. And this can save you all of those complications such as workflows running out or running out of time. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So this is an overview of what queuing up work looks like. As you can see, I've got four different types of work queues. And also it is important to note that some of them is to process an output versus an input. And also for each of them, there is some kind of automation tasks involved. So it's for these type of complex processes which require some automation, but they run completely asynchronously. That is the beauty of queuing. And if you've got such scenarios, you, queuing would be the right candidate for that. So there's some good examples of where queuing is already being used. And as you can look at the last line, this is how financial service industries already works. They process thousands and thousands of transactions every day. Transactions such as you went ahead and submitted a paycheck or I went ahead and did a transaction of some bill. Those are the type of transactions. As you know, that they are always being processed and every time at night or early morning, those transactions go through. So as you can see, you are already experiencing queues in your day-to-day -day life. And for this reason, Power Automate Desktop also can provide that. There are some neat benefits that come along with work queue. I like the last one because it does have a centralized monitoring functionality, which I'll show you some examples of. And you can go ahead and increase the efficiency and scalability. So it doesn't just have to be small types of queue items. They can be pretty large as well. And you can even submit them in bulk, which is something I'll show you how you can do that in Power Automate for desktop. So here are going to be the five steps that I will show you in my hands-on demo. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create the work queue. And keep in mind that is done in Power Automate desktop on the cloud side. Then we'll go and create a work queue item manually, again on the cloud side, just so that you see how these work queue items happen and also the understanding of how its ID is required. So these are the steps we are going to use to complete this work queue process. First of all, we'll create the main work queue from the Power Automate cloud side. We'll also go and add a work queue item again from the cloud side so you understand what it is going on. Also the important nuances that you need to be aware of. Then I'll show you how you can add these items in bulk using Power Automate Desktop and I'll show you how we can use workflows for that. We will also go ahead and process these items in bulk using the Power Automate Desktop and I'll show you the triggering of these processes in bulk. We can go and do that from the cloud side as well. So this example is a really good end-to-end, -end, also shows you a good synergy between the cloud and the desktop flow. So let's get started. So here I am in my Power Automate Cloud Flows and on the left vertical navigation, if you don't see queues, simply go and click on more and right over here, you will see your work queues. And just to make sure that it always remains over there, you can go ahead and click on the pin so that it'll always remain there, all right? Now that I have it, I can go and click on work queues and this is where you go ahead and add those work queues one at a time. So let's go and add one just so that you understand how the process is. For a new work queue, I'm gonna go add a new queue. Here I'm gonna click on the plus new, and this is the process. You go and give the queue name, important to give a description. You can leave the work queue aside because it'll automatically go and generate one for you, and then you can go and change the schema type. For mine, I'm gonna leave it as none, but you've got two other options to work with. You've got JSON and you've got XSD. In case you've got any files that needs to come in and you need to go ahead and extrapolate data from that and they might already be in either one of these two format styles, go ahead and select one of them. It'll actually make your job a lot easier. So what I did is I went ahead and created a work queue already because I wanted to show you the example that this work queue key is by default generated. Now here I'm gonna go and click on cancel. I'll come over here to the sample input one. And if I go and click on this edit, it slides out. I've given a name, I've given a description, but voila, see that work queue key? That is the one that is automatically generated for us to use. And you're gonna use that in a second, all right? So keep that in mind that this is a very important one. 
But now that you come over here, you can see that this is the central administration and the monitoring place to see all your queues that are happening. You can go and see are any of the processes in status, uh, when was this created, who is the owner. Uh, these work queue items by statuses, these are the ones that was automatically generated. You can go ahead and leverage that. And you can also go ahead and manage your access. Uh, right now it is shared only with me because I am the creator and the owner, but you can go ahead and add other people and give them access over here as well. So I went and showed you how to go ahead and create this work queue, but now I'm going to add one manually directly from the cloud side. So here you go. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go and add a new item. So I'll go and say, adding this manually. The status, I only have two options. It is currently queued or it is on hold. So I'll leave it as queued, priority, you've got a few options, low, normal, high, I'll leave it at the default normal. Um, input, I'm gonna say adding this item manually, manually online. And processing notes, process this important item, All right? So now when I go and click on create, you will see that it's going ahead and getting created. And now that work queue item has been created. So it has been created. Now if I go and click on it and actually go and click on edit, you will see that this also has a unique ID or reference automatically created. That's very important for you to know that you do not need to fill out this field. It automatically generates that. Now, if you're manually managing these queue items, then you can come over here to this new item that is created and change its status. So currently the status is queued. I can click on this ellipsis. I can click on the change queue item status and now say that, okay, I've gone ahead and now started processing it. So I can select the processing, then go ahead and click on applying. It'll go ahead and get saved and voila, the status is now being processed. So these were the two things that I showed you directly from the cloud side, also getting you introduced to the whole concept. But now let's go and deep dive a little bit on how I can go ahead and automate this. So the first thing I wanna show you is how you can also add a work queue item from the cloud automatically using a flow. Because remember, we just added one manually also from the cloud, but I wanna show you how you can do it automatically. So here it is, I've got a flow, I call that as an add item to work queue. It is of a type that we manually trigger. Uh, and I'll go ahead and click on this edit so you can actually see what are the actions I've added. This is just the manual one. And as you can see, I've got no inputs. The key one is which dataverse table am I adding it to and what am I adding? So if I go and click on this action, you can see that there is actually a table name. It is called as work queue items. And that table is very specific to the environment that you are. So keep that in mind. All right, next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and give it a name. Remember the name that we were doing it manually, we were adding one over there. Here it is automatically adding that. There is also the input which is automatically adding it. But we also need to give this syntax, this format of the work queue ID. And how did I get this work queue ID? Well, let's go back over here. In this queue items, when you go ahead and take a look on the top, this is the new ID. See that work queues? This is the work new queue item. When I go and click on it, you get this URL. And see the ones that are ending over here? 049828. When I come back over here in the flow, you the exact same one. But you gotta make sure that you add this prefix as well. It is call as work queues and without any space bars, you open up the bracket and you go ahead and grab this GUID and then you go ahead and add it over here and close the bracket. This is something that you have to do right now. There is no work around it, but that's what makes sure that you are talking to the correct views. And then I've gone ahead and added an input because it's automatically being populated. But let's go ahead and test this, all right? So I'll go back, I'll go ahead and run it uh, there is no input needed because it's automatically there. So I'll go ahead and click on this run flow. It is going ahead and starting successfully. Here it is running. And if I go ahead and refresh it, voila, it completed successfully. But let's go back to our work queue. All right, so now that I'm here, if I go ahead and refresh this one, voila, you see that new item, input item number two. This is the one that we added and now it is by default in the status queue. So understood how this works directly from the cloud side as well, because we completed two things. We added the item manually. We also added automatically as a single item from the cloud side. But now let's take it to even higher level by doing it in bulk, but from Power Automate from desktop. 
All right, so I'm in my desktop site and here is the first flow that I wanna take a look at. It's an example of adding work queue items in bulk. So if I go and click on the pencil, we're going to see what this whole workflow is all about. Now, I'm just giving you a scenario where somebody's actually going ahead and sending it to you as an email with a very specific subject. The subject has something called as invoice with an Excel spreadsheet, and that spreadsheet has all the different invoices, and you're gonna take those invoices and add it in as queue items in bulk using this Power Automate desktop flow. Now, I said that it's coming in as an email, so we're gonna go ahead and launch the Outlook from this machine. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. So, Daniel, I really don't have to do this because I can go and get the Outlook from the cloud side. Uh, you can, but remember, we are doing this in bulk, which means even if you could access it from the cloud side, you're going to have to send a lot of items from the cloud to the desktop. And that's a lot of communication that goes back and forth. So it just becomes easier to open up the local desktop output, get the attachment, and let the power automate for desktop do the magic, which is the bulk one. So that's why my first action is launch the Outlook and I go and click on wait. And for me, I'm putting in 10 seconds. Now, why did I put in 10 seconds over here? That's because I'm giving my Outlook just that little extra time for its emails to be synchronized and to go and get the most updated email. Now, I know it's 10 seconds for my machine because I know the power and the capacity of my machine. But that is a judgment call that you will have to make because your machine may not need 10 seconds. You might need only five seconds or you might need actually something more. So you make that judgment call. The little tip I'll give you is add that little extra buffer space because I know that my machine usually takes only seven to eight seconds, but I added two extra seconds just for that buffer space. Make sense? Cool. So now that we've gone ahead and launched it, I've given it a little wait, we are going ahead and now retrieving the email. And this is the important thing. Um, the e this is, and this is the important thing. It is an Outlook instance. The account is my email address. It's coming in over here. Specifically, I'm going to the inbox folder. And over there, I'm going to go and retrieve any unread email messages only. Also, from whom is it coming from? Well, it's coming in from this Gmail account. And the subject contains invoice yes it will have an attachment and i want to take that attachment and store it specifically in this local folder these are the action these are the properties of this very specific action so i'll go and cancel this off um, after that i go ahead and close my outlook but i go ahead and launch that excel spreadsheet which i just got all right so that excel spreadsheet will be launched I go ahead and set that active spreadsheet, which is basically that one sheet that is have. That's going to be my active one. And then after that, I go ahead and start reading it. So there's this action, which is read from Excel spreadsheet, all values available from that Excel spreadsheet. That's the one that I'm going to do. But inside this for each loop that is created, I am going to now go ahead and add these work queue items. So this work queue item right over here, if you just go and do a search for work queue, that is it, add work queue item. That's the action that I dragged and dropped it inside the for each. So if I now go ahead and open it up, it's very important that we get the correct one, correct one. So this work queue, that's it. See the sample input one, you get that from the drop down. You don't have to go and type it in. And why do I see it is because I have access to it directly on the cloud side. Just to be sure, if I come back over here, you see that work queue sample input one, that's the one. When I come back over here, sample input one. And the way I want to enter it is make sure that the status by default is in queue, priority is normal, the name will whatever is the name of the queue, input, and that's it. See, it's very similar to how we went and did it manually on the cloud side. Over here, you can go and automate it. But it is going to go and do that in a loop fashion. And once that for each is completed, it will go and close that Excel spreadsheet. So let me give you a quick overview of what the spreadsheet looks like. Uh, here is the one that I'm actually going to email it to me, but I'll open it up so you can see it. This is what it is. It's got the name. These are all the different names that I have. Uh, this is the status. And then this is the input. Just a very simple verbiage because it's not the content, it's the process, it's the queue that you want to see, all right? But now let's make sure that this actually runs. So I'll just go ahead and close this flow because everything looks good over here. Um, I'll go ahead and keep this ready because this is the one that's going to trigger. So from here, I'm going to go and send an email to Christian. From here, I'm going to go and send an email and this is the email address that I'm expecting from. Also, 
my subject does contain invoice and it has an attachment. So all of those requirements are met. So I'll go and click on send, which means it has been sent from this source and the destination is my own inbox. So now let me go ahead and start my flow, my desktop flow, right? So I'll go and click on play. And as you can see, my hands are up over here. It is preparing, it is running. Next thing we will see is Outlook show up. It's in my taskbar, so you can't see it, but Outlook has shown up. It will stay that way for 10 seconds. And then after that, the flow should be able to go and get the attachment and put it on a very specific folder. So it is gone ahead and finish it. I see that Excel spreadsheet has opened up, which is great, which means it's actually doing some stuff over here, right? Because it can still actually going and running it. So we got to wait till all of that is done. It has finished. I see the status over here. It says not running anymore. And there you go on the bottom, right? It said it finished successfully. But is it really successful? Well, we can always find out one thing quickly. Let's go back to that folder location on my machine, all right? Right over here. See, this one just came in. That's the place that we are going to go and save it to. So I like that. But the ultimate test is let's go to our cloud flow and take a look at this Q item. So I'm going to go in over here in this Q item. And now you can see all of these came in because these are the ones that was added automatically through our desktop flow. So it works. It works really well. We took the data from that spreadsheet, which came in from my incoming email. And we went ahead in bulk, added all of those items. Pretty awesome. But let's not stop over here because now I also want to go ahead and process that in bulk from my local machine. And I can do that for my desktop flow as well. So let's go take a look at that flow. Uh, this was the one to go ahead and add it. This is the one to go ahead and process the work queue items. So if I go and click on the pencil right here, you will actually see what was the logic of my workflow. All right, so it's loading in from the desktop flow, getting things ready. And here in the process work queue items, which is something you can see over here, work queue items. Uh, the first one we did was to go and add a work queue item. This one is to process it. Over here, I'm putting in a lot of if and else conditions. If the value is one, go ahead and change the I, go ahead and change the queue item to process. If the value is two, go ahead and set it to generic exception. If the value is anything other than that, go ahead and put that as a business exception. Uh, this is just to show you some examples of how it's being processed. Uh, you could go and change that in different scenarios based on the content that you're getting, but you get the idea. These are how the actions with all the conditions work. So if I go ahead and now close out of this one and I go ahead and run it, what I want to do is actually while this is running, so it's preparing and it has started running, let's go up to the cloud flow over here and I'll just start refreshing. And moment you see it running, you can see after that one changed from queue to processing. The other one, because its value input was three, it made it as a business exception. The other processing is going on. You see, it's happening really fast. Remember, this thing got triggered from the desktop side, but the processing is happening on the cloud. Beautiful synergy that happens between the cloud and the desktop and vice versa. Uh, but all in all, this should finish any second and voila on the bottom right, it said that it completed successfully and it did because we just verified it. But wait, there's one more thing we could do to take it to the next level. And that is to go ahead and trigger it such that both the desktop items are started from the cloud side. And what does that mean? If I come to my cloud flows, I actually have this one flow, which I'm triggering manually. But if I go in, you will see that it's got this manual trigger, which is input. And it's got this manual trigger, which is empty. There is no input. But now I'm going ahead and running the Power Automate desktop flow to add the items in bulk, which is the first desktop flow we did, and to also go ahead and run the desktop flow to process the queues. These are the ones we individually ran. However, you can go and have them run in a sequential manner. Both these desktop flows can be triggered directly from the cloud side as well you have that flexibility. And why would you need that? Is because you may not exactly know when that input email is coming in. So if for some reason you saw that on your phone, they, oh, the email has come in, let me go ahead and trigger this flow so that the desktop can go and do all the magic that it needs. This is just an option that you also have if you cannot predict it. But other than that, the whole process is completely automated. So even though I showed you a full end-to-end -end demo, I have only scratched the surface of it. Why? Because I only created one work queue. Granted, I added a bunch of items into it, but you can go and add multiple work queues. Remember the PowerPoint presentation I just showed you? There was a work queue for inbound stuff, input stuff. There could be some for output stuff, and each of them can have multiple items in it. 
This is the whole thing about processing complex items in queue in an asynchronous manner. Starting to make sense now? Because hopefully you can find business needs that you may already have to leverage in work queue items. Hopefully this video was useful to you. And as always, you use Power Automate Flow on the cloud and desktop side. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.